Path of Exile 3.12 is Heist League, where we're going to be infiltrating enemy bases and trying to get some fat loot, including a ton of currency, interesting new uniques, as well as some changed uniques that we've known for many years. On top of this, we're going to be getting new versions of gems that give us alternate quality options, and some of them are pretty ridiculous. And what better way to start the new league than with a very powerful clear build that also has insane defensive layers, is very easy to gear up, and has one of the most satisfying playstyles in the entirety of the game. This is Essence Train Contagion. Hey guys, Big Ducks here, and welcome back to the channel. Now, Essence Train Contagion needs a no introduction. This is the Premier League start ability that everyone has been using for years and years and years at this point. It has some of the best clear speed in the game, it's got really, really solid defenses, and it's super easy to gear. Now the change that's happened to this ability recently is the fact that people are leveling it as a Spell Slinger. And what a Spell Slinger is, it allows you to just attack with your wand one time and cast all of the abilities that you have reserved at that point. So the idea here is that we reserve Contagion, we reserve Essence Train, and also we add in Soul Rin to give us a little bit more single target. This gets us all the way up to red tier maps. Now remember guys, if you enjoy my content, make sure to like this video, and also consider subscribing for more content similar to this. And also, consider joining the flock if you want to support me directly with the join button down below this video. Now without further ado, let's take a look at some of the leveling styles of this build, as well as some of the things that we accomplish in the end game, and then we'll get into the guide. Yeah, it always feels really bad to like roll a piece of gear that's like, you got like an eye level 86 chess piece and you're like rolling it with currency, and you get like 5 life and like 15% block recovery. Just feels like a kick in the pants, man. They don't let things like that slide in PoE. Hello, Mr. Shaper Clone. Are you having fun hitting us in the back? Oh, come on. You're basically dead. Why you gotta be like this, Shaper? Hey, I don't know why you gotta be like this, dude. It's gotta be so extra. Every time, dude. The one good thing, though, is that it's very easy to clear while killing these as ED Contagion. So that is one positive that the build does have going for it. I wonder if I can just tank him. Seems legit. I don't think the build needs it, right? You get enough regen from Essence Train. It was just that that wave was just hit. It was just very very tough. This one's gonna be tough too. This one's gonna be worse. Yeah, look at how much damage this shit does. Holy fuck. You see my health bar? You see it, like, fucking blipping like that? You see that shit, right? Like, <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Uh... Alright guys, so this is Essence Strain Contagion. Now, this build is one of the best League starters, as I told you before. Excellent clear. Tons of defensives, and also has some pretty respectable single target, and very, very easy to gear. Now, the first version of this build is a Spell Slinger that uses a wand as well as a shield. The next version of this build that you're going to transition to later in the game uses a Spell Bow or a Staff and a Quiver if you're using the Spell Bow. Now, the Spell Slinger version of this build focuses on casting three abilities at one time through the Spell Slinger support. It means that every time that you attack with your wand, you're going to be casting all of the abilities that you have reserved. You're going to see we have three Spell Slingers reserved here, and those abilities are going to be Essence Strain, Soul Rend, as well as Contagion. We're using currently a 6-link Essence Strain, a 4-link Soul Rend, and a 2-link Contagion. This means that it is an excellent clear ability. It's absolutely excellent. There's probably not very much in the game that's going to level as smoothly as this. However, it does have a downside. Now, as with most abilities that use Spell Slinger, when you really get into the very end of the game, you're not going to be able to pull out that same DPS that you're hoping to, specifically because damage over time abilities don't stack. So, what that means is that the main draw of using Spell Slinger is the fact that you can spam the hell out of these abilities. And with Essence Ring, Contagion, as well as Soul Rend, these abilities have a damage over time effect that doesn't stack, it replaces it. So I'm going to show you a map. I'll show you that the actual clear of the Spell Slinger version of this build is really, really powerful. This is going to be a tier 11 map. This is about the furthest that you're going to get with the Spell Slinger version of it. But you can see, absolutely excellent clear. Now, I've got some decent gear, but this gear isn't really anything special. The most special 
special thing I've got is the Kintsugi, but I mean, other than that, this is just a plus one spell wand with trigger socketed spells, as well as just a random Prism Guardian I had in my inventory. We got a Devouring Diadem and some random yellows. Nothing really special about any of this gear, but all the way up to around um, tier 11 or so maps, this will do perfectly fine. Excellent clear, easy playstyle, doesn't take almost any brain cells to be able to play, and this is the same exact situation that you're going to have while leveling. While leveling, you are going to have no problems whatsoever. There's a reason that a lot of people, especially in the racing community, have been using this as one of their like race starts, is the Chaos Spell Slinger as they call it. Excellent clear, pretty decent single target, however when you start getting into these very high tier maps you're going to notice that the single target does fall off, and that's the main reason that you're going to want to be transitioning into the full version of the build. I'm going to skip to the boss real quick and then I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so now that we're at the boss you're going to see the single target damage of this ability and this spell slinger version is not very high. This is the main reason that I kind of have issues with this build, especially later on. Now some of you might be saying, oh well you can supplement Bane and it'll do better single target damage and this isn't the full possibility of the of the spell slinger version but the the problem here is that if you're already going to be six linking bane and you're going to be using that as your single target why not just convert into the better version of the build that does more damage anyways it'll allow you to use a six link essence drain it'll allow you to use a six link bane and you can do significantly more damage than even having to worry about this that's why I feel that it's better to just be transitioning off of this version of the build as soon as you're able to do it realistically. Now, I'll go into the leveling section later on in the video. You can find links down below to each of the different sections, and I'll be talking about how you make that transition. But in the meantime, let me show you how the build feels when you do the full conversion into the finalized version of the build, which is the Essence Strain Contagion Trickster. All right, so now that I have transitioned my gear and my items around into the full version of the build, we're using a six link Essence Strain in a plus one, plus two spell bow, as well as a six link Blight. This is gonna be a Vol Blight. It helps a little bit with clear and um, higher single target. We're also going to be using a few auras now. Discipline, Malevolence, we've got an Enlighten and a Flame Dash linked in there. We are also using Aspect of the Spider. This is something that's going to be given to us by our belt or wherever else you want to craft it. And now we do have a four link Contagion that's got some bigger AoE on it. It means that when we cast our Contagion, it's going to be a huge AoE and much easier to clear with. We also do use Withering Step for our Wither debuff, and we do have a Wither Totem that you can use as well just to give you a little bit extra Wither stacks. Honestly, I kind of feel that Withering Step is enough, but Withering Step does take a use of your Flame Dash whenever you use it. Keep in mind, if you're using Withering Step to stack your Withers on the boss, it is going to use casts of your Flame Dash. There is something else that you could do. You could stop using the Wither Totem and the Spell Totem completely, and you could just move this over into here with Flame Dash as well as like a second wind. That would probably be better. I just haven't done it here. That'll be most likely what's in the path of building. Now let me show you a tier 16 map. So the last map that we did was a tier 11 map. We've transitioned over in the full version of the build, and you saw the clear, and you you saw the damage of the other version now let me show you what it's like when you actually do have the full version of this build going now, this is a tier 16 map so enemies are going to be far far more difficult however you're going to notice they die almost instantly the clear of this ability is actually insane it's one of the best clear abilities in the entirety of the game now, you do have to press two buttons now instead of just being able to press your one win button as you could before but the clear on this is significantly better we're in a tier 16 map we're actually clearing faster than we were before now the other interesting thing about this is that although we did lose Solren, we did gain a six link blight now what this is going to give us is that when we do end up getting to the boss you'll see that the damage that we did the boss is significantly higher than what we were doing before even though we're on a much higher tier map so we're going to jump to the boss now, and then I'll show you that here in just a second. Alright, so now that we're here at the boss, there's a few of them, so we got to clear this out before we can actually see them. Now you're going to see these are the bosses right here. Now, their health is going down significantly faster, even as a tier 16 enemy, compared to what we did in the other map. And they're already dead. Now, this is just demonstrating the power that the build has when you transition into the full version. You can go all the way up through the game. Um, as you saw in some of the clips, we were able to clear most of the in-game bosses with m pretty much no issue. The damage on single target is going to be a little bit lower than, say, some other really, really powerful bossing builds, but there's not very much that can hold a candle to the clear of Essence Strain and Contagion. So let's get on to the leveling section of the guide. Now, on leveling this build, you're going to have to transition to a few different types of playstyles a few times. Now, when you initially start out, you're going to level, you're going to run through the first zone, kill Hillock, and then you're going to be getting the ability called Blight. 
Now Blight you're going to be getting at level 1, and you will keep this ability all the way through the game. Now I've showed you before, Blight is an ability that you're just going to be able to channel. This ability is actually really strong early on in the game. You can use this for clearing all the way up to until the point where you get Spellslinger if you really want to. This ability does enough damage that you can just kind of one-tap enemies like this, and it'll still kill most enemies. You can hold it for a little bit longer for blue enemies and a lot longer for yellow enemies. This is going to be a very, very good addition to single target for the build. Once you hit level 4, you are going to get access to Contagion. This is the first half of the actual full version of the ability. Now, Contagion is not useful by itself. You've seen Contagion, this is the giant circle that actually applies the debuff that allows Essence Drain to proliferate. This ability by itself is not actually that useful. You'll keep using Blight until you get to 12, which is going to get you Essence Drain. At around level 10, you're going to be getting Flame Dash and Smoke Mine. If you don't know how to do the Flame Dash Smoke Mine jump, simply just use Flame Dash. This is a good way to move around, get in and out of enemies, and give you some extra movement through maps. After that, like I said, you're going to be getting Essence Drain at level 12, and this is where you're mainly going to transition the way that the build plays. You're no longer really going to be using Blight for clear, you're going to be using the one-two punch of Contagion and Essence Strain. When you cast Contagion on the ground, it's going to infect them with a very weak damage over time. However, when you use Essence Strain into the pack of enemies, it is going to proliferate that Essence Strain to every single enemy that has Contagion on it. It's just going to jump to everything that's nearby. This is where you get those clips of like entire waves of enemies just dying instantly. Now, when you get to level 12, you'll start using Essence Strain, and this is going to be the main way that you clear all the way up until you get Spell Slinger. Now, at level 16, you are going to want to pick up Frenzy. You're going to get this in Act 2, Pick it up on the way there, because you're going to need this for later on. At level 24, you are going to get access to Spellslinger, and this is where the build really starts to take off with leveling. As I said before, what Spellslinger does is it allows you to reserve a portion of your mana, and every time that you attack with a wand, you're actually going to be casting all of the abilities that you've reserved. So what you're going to be looking for is you're going to be looking for a 4-link Essence Drain, a 4-link Solrend, which we'll talk about here in a second, and a 2-link Contagion. When you have all of those abilities reserved, as I showed you earlier in the video, every single time you attack with the wand, it's going to cast all three of them at the same time, and they do enough damage just by the levels of the gems that you're not going to have to worry about any of that. The last ability that I talked about is Soul Rend. What this ability does, I'll slot it in here instead of Blight, this shoots out a little beam that kind of like bends and curves towards enemies. When you actually shoot this at an enemy, it'll kind of curve towards it and try to seek it out. This is just another damage over time ability. It does a ton of chaos damage per second and does a light hit that does a little bit of on hit damage. Between all three of those abilities together, you're going to absolutely mow through the entire game. Now, once you have all of those abilities and you're moving through the game, that is gonna sustain you all the way up until red tier maps. You don't have to have anything else. But let's talk about some of the things that you're going to need to look for while actually leveling. So the major thing that you really need to be looking for is as soon as you start to get into the first few acts, you really should be looking in these vendors for a few things. When you talk to these vendors and you're leveling up, these vendor um, inventories are going to change every time that you level. What you're looking for is you're looking for three links and four links. Ultimately, you do want to get four links in the helmet, chest, and glove slot as soon as you possibly can. Now, you also can get a four link in the boot slot. However, you really do want to be looking for move speed boots if you can find them. There's probably not going to be any here, but you really are looking for movement speed boots and you want to prioritize movement speed boots while you're leveling. You're going to be wanting to get a couple four links, a couple three links if you can, and you're going to want to be four linking your essence train as soon as you can, four linking soul rend as soon as you can, and just getting a two link on contagion. Now, if you do have additional slots beyond that, you can slot in Blight just to give you a little bit extra help with single target while leveling, but honestly, I don't think it's needed. You should be leveling Blight, but don't worry too much about it. Now, the other thing that you should be thinking about is your weapon itself. Now, the weapon, while doing Spell Slinger, is it's very, very important, specifically for this Spell Slinger build, that you find a carved wand and you just stick with that carved wand for pretty much the whole game. When I was leveling, chat was making fun of me because I was literally using a white carved wand all the way into maps. It doesn't matter. The thing that you're worried about is the attacks per second on this wand. This is the first one that you can get that has 1.5 attacks per second. There might be another one, but the next one that I can think of is an imbued wand, and that's at like level 60 or something like that. There's probably ones in between. You can let me know down in the comments if I'm wrong. The attack speed on the wand is all that matters. Now, the cool thing about this is, is that when you get this wand at a very early level, these low level wands can actually roll some of the best mods in the game possible. These wands here, I'm just going to hit it with a couple alterations here, but look, <laughs> one alteration. I already got Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier. These low-level wands will roll some pretty insane stuff. That Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier, look, plus one a level of all lightning skills. 
plus one to level of all cold skills. It's very, very easy to alteration roll into really, really powerful wands early on. Don't overlook that because you might be able to get yourself a pretty crazy wand very early in the game for whatever build that you're doing. So another thing that a lot of people do wrong is that they don't actually itemize their gear properly while they're leveling. And I want you to know that all the way through the game, nothing matters on your gear except getting four links and getting as many links and health as you can. And the reason being is that as you level up and you find these random items, like say that you bought, I don't know, you found these cool pair of boots, right? Well, no, let's do gloves because we, we, we want to make sure that we're using non-boots. Boots, you want to make sure you get movement speed in. So we, we bought these cool pair of gloves, right? Now, say that we need fire resist or something. As soon as you get to act two and you unlock Helena, you're going to be able to go to your hideout. And in your hideout, you've got this little pedestal right here called the crafting bench. Now, I have a lot more things unlocked here, but very, very early in the game, like as soon as you get this, you can actually do this low tier resistance craft, right? It only requires level 12. So as soon as you have access to this, you can use a single transmutation orb to put up to 20 of any resist on these pieces of gear. You can do that for all of your pieces of gear. It doesn't matter what it is. You can craft insane amounts of resistances. You can put it on wands, shields, rings, amulets, hell, everything. Doesn't matter what it is. So you gotta imagine, if you're having issues with resists, you could literally pick up white gear, white gear, and just enchant it. All you have to do, you can fill out all of your extra resists, you shouldn't have any problems whatsoever. If you're not able to actually have enough transmutation orbs, just pick up some random yellows and sell them and vendor them before you identify them and you'll have plenty of transmutation orbs. If you need alteration orbs to buy some of your gems, then you're just going to be needing to sell identified items. So when you're leveling, you can pick up armor scraps and you can pick up blacksmith's whetstones as well as these transmutation orbs that I said before. And as you're leveling, you can sell these for identify scrolls. So the armor scraps will give you two for one, the blacksmith's whetstones will give you four for one, and transmutation orbs will give you four for one as well. It's an insane amount of identify scrolls. If you're having trouble getting them, just vendor some of those different little pieces of currency and you'll have a much, much easier time. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is actually transitioning this build. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I personally think that you should just grab whatever wand, whatever shield that you can, try to get a tabula rasa as your, as your chess piece early on in the league and just get that six link. Or if you can find a five link or a six link piece of armor, just use that for as long as you can, right? A tabula, you can farm the divination cards, you can buy it early on in the league, or something that you can do is you can buy a six link corrupted chess piece with some decent stats and the correct colors that you need. Those are normally like 30, maybe 35 chaos very early in the league. They're pretty cheap because random people are going to find them in Vol side zones, so you, you, you don't have too much of a problem getting those. Once you've got those things, all that you really need to worry about is just getting up to red tier maps, getting yourself some basic currency, and then purchasing a weapon for transitioning the build over. Now you can do one of two things. If it's if it's a little bit further into the league and you have some money, you can buy one of these spell bows. These are a little bit tough to come by very early in the league because these crafts are really hard to get. However, I'm going to link up in the top right right now a video that explains to you how to make this bow very early in the league. I, I show you a very step-by-step -step process on getting all of these crafts unlocked. It might take you some time, but if you're really dead set on getting this in like the first week, that video is the way to go about it. You can get the Chaos Damage Over Time staff. Um, I think it's called Cane of Unraveling. It's a unique, you don't even need it linked. You can just use a four link and throw your Blight in there. That's a really, really solid staff for early in the league and it's really, really cheap early on. Like you probably pay like 10, maybe 20 Chaos for one. And then much later on, it's gonna be even cheaper. And then you can upgrade into the spell boo later. I use Soul Strike as my quiver on this just for the extra energy shield, but you can use pretty much whatever you want. There are better quivers that have like Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier and like Life and things like that, so you could do that. But that's pretty much all you need to transition because the beautiful thing about this build is that this skill tree works for both versions of the build. There's no changes whatsoever. The only thing that you would really change is you would just drop in this Spreading Rot Gem to give yourself the, the Blight Inflicts Withered when you transition over to it. Other than that, the builds are exactly the same. Every single point does not need to be respected by any means. You just go your normal in-game version of the build and it works perfectly fine for the leveling version of the build. So very, very easy to transition into. You just gotta get that staff and that's pretty much it. You can transition directly into it. The last thing we're gonna talk about is Path of Building. Now, if you don't know what Path of Building is, I suggest that you start learning it if you're playing Path of Exile, especially on the computer. You should go download Path of Building. It's in the description below this video. You can download Path of Building, the community fork, as well as get the paste bin to import my build into this program. 
But what you're going to do when you load it up is you're going to hit new. You're going to jump up here to the left and hit import export build. You're going to hit import from pastebin and you're going to paste that pastebin link that I have in there into this pastebin.com link box here. Once you import that in, it's going to load up my essence string contention Contagion Trickster. Now this is going to be a little bit different than the one you're seeing here because I'm going to have a fully updated version available in the pastebin so you can only get it down there. Go look at it. I'm going to add in the leveling groups for skills. It's going to have tons of notes. Go read through these notes. It's going to have all the information that you need. It's going to have multiple item sets that you're going to be able to grab. It's going to have everything that you could ever want all here in the pastebin for Path of Building. Go download it, go take a look. Most of your questions can be answered there. Now, in the off chance that your question hasn't been answered and you have no idea how to do something or you have an extra question that I didn't cover in the pastebin, please go look at the pastebin first. You can join my Discord, the link is down below in the description, and you can come and ask in the questions channel or anywhere else for some help with one of the builds. Myself or any of my mods or any of the other helpful people in the community will be more than happy to help you with that. So join the Discord, link is down below. So remember guys, I do update these Path of Building pastebins pretty frequently. Down in the description, there's going to be notes on the Path of Building that show you the dates that I've updated them and why I've updated them. So if anything changes, like say something gets nerfed or we get the patch notes out and something changes about the the tree i'm gonna be updating it as soon as i can so don't worry just go and grab it as soon as you're ready so remember guys if you enjoy this content like this video so that more people can see it subscribe for more content similar to this and stay safe out there in ray class and we'll see you guys in the next video